Hi everyone and welcome to the happy hour. I'm so glad that you guys came back today for another brand new video. I got this idea from the YouTube channel Mel. She's always done an end of the year things I've learned in that year. So I thought this would be really fun and I'm doing 17 things I've learned in 2017. So come along with me and I'll let you guys know how my year went. The number one thing I've learned is that life can change instantly can change in a moment and you can think that you're good and that everything's going well and then everything changes so for so many years I don't think I realized how life can just change instantly even though this year I haven't had anything major happen that has really hit me on the head with this for some reason just over the course of little events I have really learned this the second thing I learned was not to idolize anything, any object or people or really anything. What I noticed in 2017 was that anytime I put anybody on a pedestal or idolized any object or did anything like that, that, that would get taken away from me. There's a lot of biblical examples of like idolizing things and that things will get taken away from you. And I knew all of that information, but just in this year, I have figured out that when you start to idolize something, it will get taken away from you or it will change or the dynamic of it will change. I've had this happen mostly with like people and relationships. And when I start to like idolize this certain relationship, um, it kind of gets changed and taken away. Or even like idolizing my husband or my child and being so focused on them that I'm not focused on anything else, um, then certain events will occur that kind of pull me back and say, hey, hey, hey. But anytime you idolize a person, an object, then something will change. You can't just idolize something forever. It will get either taken away from you or changed in some regard. The third thing that I learned in 2017 is basically to do what you think of in your head. So if it occurs to you to do a kindness for somebody, actually go out and do that kindness. If it occurs to you to send a thank you note or something comes up where you're like, I should text them and say it was really nice hanging out with them that night or just those little things that kind of hit you in the back of your mind. Um, for me, I have noticed that this has happened my whole life. Um, I, I don't know if this actually happens for other people, but this is just how it happens for me. And I notice that if I don't do it, I really beat myself up. I think like, oh, I should have done that. And I keep remembering it and going over it. And I should have done that. I should have, um, I should have called them. I should have sent a thank you note. Um, I should have got up and prayed with them. Or I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been embarrassed about something and just got up and did it. If in the back of your head, God's telling you to do something, you should just do it. Big, small, doesn't matter. You should just do it. Fourth thing I learned is that I really like to cook for people. Who would have guessed? Because I was the girl, no joke, that would burn water. Couldn't cook at all, would leave ingredients out. My family used to make horrible fun of me, almost to the point where like, it gave me a complex and I didn't want to cook anything. And this year, I just kind of jumped in with both feet and said, you know what? There are some really good things that I cook and I might not be really bad at this. And so I just jumped in and tried and I cooked for people and the outpouring response that I got was amazing. Like I, I had no idea and it just made me feel such a purpose in myself and it just made me feel so much better about myself. So I, I have learned that I, I really like to cook for people and I think I'm pretty good at it. All right, number five, planning is a good thing. I have thought for so long that I was just obsessive and crazy and neurotic and my husband is in the background probably not in his head. He 
is laughing in the background. He knows. I have thought that this is like a terrible thing that I shouldn't be doing and that I've kind of been made fun of about it. Especially like meal planning and stuff. When my son was really small, people would be like, why do you do that? And I have learned in 2017 that you know what? It's okay and planning is a good thing. And for many reasons, it has saved me and saved my family because I have meals planned, um, things happen, money gets planned better, and planning is a really good thing. And for so long, I didn't think it was. All right, number six. Love people even when you don't like people. This is something I struggle with that's super hard for me, and I'm sure it's super hard for everyone else. Then. Especially this year, I had many situations and many examples where I was just so frustrated with trying to communicate with people. I was so frustrated with text messaging people. I was so frustrated that people would not talk on the phone and it was impossible to talk to them in person because they were so far away. And this just kept happening to me over and over again. And I felt like it was just God telling me that, you know what, you don't have to like everyone but you can still love people. And I feel like you can still resolve a situation and get through the harsh communication and love people at the same time. I felt like God was telling me and I feel like I've really learned that even if I can't agree with them and we agree to disagree, which really has happened more, more often than I would like to admit, I can still say that I love people regardless, and they are who they are, and I can just pray that God changes them because there's nothing I can do that can change them. Number seven, this took me a while, and for some reason it just kind of worked out this year that I kind of figured it out, and not just figured it out, but really like put it into practice. But you can forgive people without letting them hurt you again and again and again. So you can forgive somebody for what has occurred, but you don't have to let them in to step on you and walk all over you. I feel a lot of times, especially when you talk to people in religious circles, that they just say forgive, 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 um, seven times 70 type of deal, just forgive. This year I really learned that I'm a daughter of a king. Like he doesn't want me to hurt. He doesn't want me to go through this horrible pain. He doesn't want me to, to deal with terrible things. He really wants the best for me and he doesn't want me to get hurt. So it's okay to put up a boundary and say, you know, this is my boundary. Yes, I forgive you, but I'm not going to let you back in to hurt me all over again. Number eight. Consistency is the key to success, for me at least. <laughs> I really believe that if I can be consistent at whatever I put my mind to, that I can be successful. And that has really been shown to me in 2017 and it's a really big goal for me in 2018. But it's with everything, um, not just business, or work, but with my family, with my child, if I can be consistent, you're successful. You just are. And if you're consistent, I'll look back and, especially this year, I feel like I've been telling stories to people about when my child was small. And I remember explaining to them like he was like a year old. And I remember saying, I took this whole day and put him in timeout every time he did something that wasn't acceptable. And then he learned that if you don't do correct behavior, you have to go to timeout. And I felt myself telling a lot of different people who had young kids the same thing to kind of give a little bit of comfort to them that yes, you can, your kids will listen to you, and that, but you need to be consistent. And for some reason, because I was telling this story multiple times this year, it's kind of hit home to me that if you're really consistent, you will get results. 
anything you do. So I was really consistent with my son and now I really believe that he's well behaved because of it. And so consistency I feel like, at least in my life, is the key to getting anything done or being successful. Number nine, make your bed. If I make my bed, I feel better. It doesn't even matter if I put makeup on or I get all pretty or I just get normal for the day. If I actually make my bed and take the two minutes to pull the sheet up, pull the comforter up, throw the pillows on, and even if it doesn't look perfect OCD, I feel better the rest of the day. And because I'm home all the time, it, I'm passing by my room a lot and it just makes me feel better. And I know there's lots of psychology to making your bed, but it has never really hit me until this year. I really could be a vegetarian. Yep, could really do it. No problem, easy. I really like vegetables, I don't crave that much meat, and I never really even considered it until this year. I'm, a, I'm not a vegetarian, just to put that out there. Um, I notice that if I don't eat a lot of meat, then I'll crave it. I'll be like, oh, I really want a steak or something like that. It's not a bad thing to eat what you enjoy as long as it's you know, healthy. And that it's not bad to go and order salads because you really like them. So I really could be a vegetarian. Number 11, you will always regret what you do not do. I have really noticed this year that if I don't do something, I really think about it and I really regret it. I have a really good memory, so I remember a lot of things and conversations that people have and conversations I have with people and really like what people say. So I think this bothers me a little more than the average person. And I have noticed that I have a really good memory and I just thought that everybody was like this and I have come to find out that that's not true. I have noticed that the things I don't do are the things that I regret the most. So if I wasn't being as brave about something or I didn't want to jump up and pray because I was embarrassed or um, just little things, I noticed that that really eats away at me. And I'm hoping that in 2018 I can get so much better at this. It's a life lesson that you regret what you don't do, not what you actually accomplish. Number 12, humility goes a long way. I actually wrote about this in my blog that I will link down below for you guys, but this just kept occurring to me all year long. That every time I was upset about something, or every time I had like a conflict with somebody else, if I was more humble than I wanted to be, because you know how you are, you get your flare up and you just want to be upset. If I could contain all that and I could be more humble, the situation turned out a hundred times better every single time. I actually had this happen with our co-op director and she had asked me to do something and I did it. And then she said, well, can you add this to it? So I did it and I had this big back and forth thing, but then nothing was really getting accomplished. And I was so upset about it because I didn't want it to look bad on me that I had waited to the last minute to do something because I had done everything on time and I had given her everything, but it was like her dropping the ball, not me. And we could not communicate via text very well about this. I finally called her and I kind of had to calm myself down and I was just like, you know what? Just take the blame on this and, and kind of move on. Just say it was your fault and see kind of how this goes. <laughs> so I called her and I said, I think that I think that we must be having a miscommunication and I, I feel like this is my fault that like this hasn't been accomplished and this and that. And I got 10,000 apologies because she knew 
you know, that it was her fault. But instead of me calling her being like, Rawr, you didn't do your job, I was humble and just said, I think this must be me. I think those were my exact words. I think this must be me because I know we're having a hard time getting this plant. And she said, no, 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 this is, this is all my fault. I'm so sorry. And, you know, told me exactly what was going on and why. And really, like, you just don't know somebody else's shoes. You just don't know what it's like to be in their skin. And I think we have to remember that as we go through life because you can really want to get, you know, hot about things, but you really have to remember that you're not walking in their shoes and that you don't know what's going on in their life. So it's better just to be humble and say, I think this must be my fault because I know we're having a hard time with this and see what they say. And if, if they don't take responsibility, then obviously there's a nice way to say, hey, I think that maybe I did my part and I did it on time and I don't understand why this transpired the way it did. So being humble, I think, is the key. And really, that has rang true to me so hard this year. All right, number 13, always apologize. I think sometimes we go through life and we think that things are little and small and we don't apologize and we just kind of move on. Most of the time people do move on, but I have noticed, especially this year, like in my house, that if I just take a minute and say, I'm really sorry that I yelled at you guys to hurry up and come on, or I'm really sorry I got angry that you didn't do the dishes even though I told you to do the dishes. If you apologize for your anger and your part in things, I feel like you get a much better response and that people are more apt to listen when you're going in that direction so they can kind of calm you down. So in my case, you know, I've apologized many different times for getting you know, losing my temper, getting mad, and I notice that the more I do that, the more I actually don't get upset because when I start to get upset about things, my husband will kind of jump in and say, you know, what do you need? Like, are you a little overwhelmed? You know, what's going on? Or my kid will kind of be a little bit more quieter and more well-behaved because he knows, like, mom's just getting a little frustrated. Don't just snap at somebody and kind of walk away and leave it alone and then later on be like, oh, they know I didn't mean it or anything. No, they really don't know. So <laughs> you need to apologize and make sure that you make those relationships right. And whether that be in your home or in your workplace or whatever it is, you know, just a quick like, hey, I'm sorry I lost my temper there for a minute, but I was really frustrated. Goes a long way. Number 14. It's okay to ask for help if you need help. This has taken me, this has taken me so many years to figure out, but I don't have to be superwoman. I don't have to get a huge checklist done every single day. And it's okay to say, you know what? I can't get all of this done and I'm gonna need some help. I was raised by a single parent so I didn't see a lot of this, and I think going into adulthood, I just felt like I could take care of everything myself, that I didn't need anyone. I didn't need anyone's help. But you kind of get to a point where you're like, no, I really need everyone's help. And I used to be kind of ashamed of it, but now I have no problem to ask for help than be so overwhelmed that you're being harsh to your family around you. So it's better to say, I can't do this all. Can you please help me and do this and do that? And sometimes that means being like a little bit of a task, a little bit of a task manager. But I feel like that's okay because it's better to assign tasks and to make sure things get done so you don't get overwhelmed than to fly off the handle and just yell at people all the time. 
and really like I'm not perfect and I can't do everything like I'm not superwoman and that's okay but as long as I love my family it's okay to ask for help because they love me too number 15 if you want to be close to God the easiest thing you can do is to just read the Bible and pray so read God's Word and pray and talk to Him and listen to what He has to say to you. I thought that I knew this and I didn't think it would be something that I would be relearning at this point in my life. But I was sitting doing Bible time with my son during homeschool and I just remember him asking about it and I would just look to him and I'm like, well, you want to be close to God you just read your Bible and you pray and he was like really that's it and in my the back of my head I'm like really that's it like why do I think that it's such this daunting thing or why do I go days without praying because I I just get wrapped up in life and it was just this massive lesson that I learned in 2017. Sitting at my kitchen table, just talking to my child, and it would just hit me like this bolt of lightning. If you pray and read your Bible, like you will get closer to God. It'll just happen. You will just immensely grow. Number 16. This one's kind of funny. I've learned in 2017 that it is a really big deal to wash your face before you go to bed. This is not something I did hardly ever. I hate washing my face like just in the sink. I usually wash my face in the shower. And it is better to take your makeup off and wash your face and your skin will really love you for it. Number 17. This is probably the most important that I didn't realize was the most important in my life until about this year. I had always believed it, but it really has just rang true in my heart. Basically, it's just to hold tight to time. Time is the most fleeting thing that we have, but it's also the most important. It's the only thing that nobody can take away from you, but it's the only thing that leaves in a second. I realized this year that you just never get time back. And if you don't do something, or you choose not to, or you choose to structure your life, or you don't see your family or things like that, that you have to live with those decisions. So there was a lot of things that I had to learn this year about time, that it was okay for my house to be messy because my, we, because my husband travels for work. And I don't see him that much so when he's here is it better for me to be spending time with him or is it better to clean my house from top to bottom no it's probably better for me to spend time with him and I really had to learn that especially the fact that I homeschool my child people give you a really hard time for homeschooling your child they tell you things like they're not socialized or uh, they're not gonna get as good of an education or, all these things that are epically not true and could be 10 videos in themselves. But the fact that I will never get this time again, the fact that my child is never going to be 8 again, and is super important. And you have to pay some kind of homage to that and say, I'm going to live my life this way where I can actually live with it. So I choose to stay home with my child at the detriment of, you know, working and finances and things like that. So it doesn't make my life easier, but it makes my life a whole bunch better. And I feel like I never learned that until this year. I never really got the fact that time is so precious and the moments you're given are epic. And just to take them all in, take them all in to where you can live with it for the rest of your life, whatever way that looks in your mind. So for me, 
I wanted to stay home with my child because he was going to be my only child and I wanted to have as much time with him as I possibly could before he went off and you know grew up. I feel like time is just this fleeting thing in our reality and we don't pay enough attention to it. Just really hold tight to time and be aware of what's going on in your life and live your life so you can look back and say that you managed your time well and that you don't have any regrets about the decisions you've made or the time that you did spend with people or the time you put towards other things. Well, those are my 17 things I learned in 2017. I hope some of them have kind of rang true to your heart. I hope that some of them will get kind of pushed into the back of your mind. So if you're in any of these kind of situations that you can kind of pull that out and say, hey, let me try that instead of um, what you would normally do. I know that the years go by and sometimes we think they're great and sometimes we think they're terrible. This was kind of a in-between year for me. I wouldn't say it was like amazing, but I wouldn't say it was terrible. It was just kind of like a good year. I'm just super grateful for that. And I think in all things, we just have to be grateful and thankful that we were allotted this much time on the earth and allotted this much time with our family around us. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much um, for coming by today and hanging out with me. And I will see you all in my next brand new video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and those bell notifications. And I will see you guys in my next brand new video. Bye.